everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Jedi Way here on the Outlaw Nation channel. I am the Outlaw John Roca, sometimes known in these quarters as Roca Fett, and I'm really excited to be back to hang out with my brother here in the Star Wars lore. That is Kevin Smets, the Smasher himself. How are you, Kevin? I can't look at lightsabers anymore without imagining what they would look like bloodstained on the wall. Jesus. So our, our, our opening is, is really interesting. We, we need to do a alkalite themed opening. But I'm good. It's yeah. good to be here. We're joined by our fellow Rogue, Rogues Inc., or is it Rogue? Uh, I thought it was Scoundrels Inc. Isn't that what Rogue it's called? Rogue Corporation. I don't. What, what is it? I don't even remember. The name. <laughs> Who knows? Outlaws Inc. We were going to go Outlaws the, Inc. Uh, yes, yeah, so direct from <laughs> the uh, Scoundrels Inc. and from the the world of the Schmodown as well. And you guys know him from numerous other places as well. Frankie Janish is joining us here. Frankie J twenty nine. Good to see you, Frankie. How are you? Hello, hello. Good to see you guys, Kevin. Hello. Uh, <laughs> nice to see you, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Laura Kelly is out this week. She's got other things going on this week, so she couldn't make the show. But Frank was very kind to step in and have a little fun crossover between the Jedi Way and Scoundrels Inc. So it's going to be a lot of fun to talk about all these things that we're going to get into. Before we jump in, I just want to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below, hit that bell button, and uh, of course, always share it. And as we're going along. Leave your comments in the comments section. Since this isn't a live show, leave your comments down below. And if you want to send some support for the Jedi Way, you can always hit that thanks button and send in some love, some financial support for us uh, doing the show, which would be great. But, gentlemen, we got a big thing. We got three big things to get to. But the number one thing we got to get to is, of course, the Acolyte trailer that dropped earlier this week so much to explore and talk about in this one we got carrie ann moss as a jedi we got daphne keen up in this thing we got jonas Suntumo coming back to play a wookie all in the hands of leslie headland here who is running this thing as well and maybe just maybe that's ak too i don't know i'm just guessing but a lot to talk about here in this uh tra uh, in this uh first teaser trailer but no yoda and no legacy characters, and already people are going nuts about, well, the uh, the canon of this is violating the, so there's all of that going on. So, uh, Kevin Smets, your thoughts on this trailer, your feelings about this trailer, what stood out to you, what worked for you, and what didn't work for you, let us know. Yeah, uh, I liked it. The first time I watched it, I kind of felt underwhelmed, because not because I was looking for legacy characters or anything like that, but I just, I don't know, like, it, it didn't grip me as much as, I remember seeing, like, the, uh, on Reddit, the leaked one from Comic Con, and I remember kind oh, yeah. of geeking out about that. But uh, and so, and then a friend of the podcast, Christian Harloff, and I were talking, texting, and I told him how I was like, yeah, I was kind of underwhelmed. But and then later, I watched it again, and mm. then it, with like just kind of fresh eyes, maybe it was just the mood I was in or whatever, and I liked it much more. Um, I. I, I just hope it leans more on the Andor aspect of like going out in like on location and stuff. And it sounds yeah. like a lot of that stuff is going to be that way. Yeah. Um, and I understand it has to have that kind of clean look too, because it is the Phantom Menace, like 200 years or whatever before the Phantom Menace. 100 years, yeah. Right? Or 100 years. Um, and so I, I always like a lived in Star Wars world, but I also think this is a different era that we're looking mm. at. And so um, some of the best parts of the Phantom Menace, which I thought George was brave about when doing the prequels was making it look shiny and new, as opposed to just doing a rehash of a new hope, which is a lot of people thought JJ was doing with the force awakens. So mm -hmm. overall, I thought I got some, I got some interesting thoughts on it when we get into the details, but, okay. um, I'm excited. I, I don't know. Again, I think maybe I'm following the right people on X because, like, I see a lot of people complaining about the people complaining about the trailer, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't see it myself. So I think I've done a good job <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah. weeding out the toxicity. Um, I do agree with one, uh, which we'll get into. I think mm -hmm. that one legacy character everybody's hoping is Plo Koon is Plo Koon in there, which would be mm -hmm. kind of cool. Um, but, uh, you know, people asking for like Plagueis and like arguing about the timelines and stuff like that. I just, I don't have time for that, but I'm excited uh, to hear what you think, Frank, obviously. And obviously when Laura comes back, I'm sure she was losing her collective mind, but as someone who's really into the high Republic, that will be, uh, interesting to see what her opinions are because this is right in her wheelhouse. What do you think, Frank? Yeah. Overall, uh, I think it was kind of like you at, at first. It wasn't anything that blew me away. I liked it. Oh. I enjoyed it. I liked the visuals. I liked kind of the tone that it was setting. Nothing, you know, they didn't really show their hand of what the show is really going to demonstrate and, and right. visually be all about, I think, which is fine. It's, it's a teaser trailer. We're still a couple months out. Yeah. Uh, I did like what they did show. 
um, which, you know, some of it I did see on thanks to Kevin's Reddit. Uh, <laughs> uh, you showed it to you? Yeah, yeah, of course it was Don't you. Tell that. I'm going to get sued by King of Leaks. You you Uh-oh. love a good leak. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I don't, you know. I'm secretly just... my time to shine, Roka. I should tell you that. <laughs> oh, are you? You're female? <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> um, I, uh, the the discourse around it is is predictable yeah. and yet sad right. um right. and then so i really don't pay i i think i'm like you kevin i i don't really see a whole lot of, i see it here and there but you know the whole uh, and i'm sure we'll get into the the whole does this break canon the sith and kiati mundi's line all that stuff and right it's just like <laughs> who cares man like i'm a huge star wars fan and i love canon continuity as much as the next person but it's sometimes you just got to be like who cares? But also, we haven't even watched a show to see how it's addressed. So I'm not even get myself, you know, all wound up for which could end up being really nothing in the end. So, hey, and is the character's head canon the franchise canon? That's the other part of this where you got to look at it. Is just because a character believes something doesn't necessarily mean that that is the actual truth for the overall universe. So there's certainly conversations to be had on that. And I get it. Some people certainly want to argue about Canon. And I think that's just something some toxic uh, YouTubers and fans want to hold on to because they got to hold on to it. Cause it's another female led thing. And I got to kill it. Uh, female led by a woman of color or a black woman. Ah, so we see that, but I thought, it, I thought it was a good trailer. We did a trailer reaction for it on the geek buddies and watched it in real time. and had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Did it. I wanted more from the trailer for sure. I wanted a punch in the, uh, the chest and get me excited blah 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 but what we got was a little darkness a little andor esque in its approach and yes the stuff was clean which is fine but we got the jedi we got all these different uh, uh colored lightsabers which i thought was badass we got the sith element throughout this whole thing i thought some of the fight sequences just enough just a taste remember this is a teaser trailer they're not going to give you three minutes you know they're not desperate for you to watch the show they know they've got some great stuff coming and so i liked it what i was confused about though was before before the trailer dropped, they changed the synopsis of the show to make it seem like this was true detective night country Star Wars. Yeah. And I was confused by that because Leslie Headland had said a hundred times over that this was a Sith led story this was about the sith and we did see amanda stenberg in this and certainly her fighting a number of people and doing what she was doing but in the end i, I i'm i'm con- concerned about where we're going and that we're getting mixed signals because if one side of the fandom gets upset then we're going to say this if the other side of the fandom gets upset we're going to say this and the truth is just come out and drop what you what your story is about and let the chips fall where they may so but overall i came away from it liking it yeah kevin what were you going to say Oh, I was just doing the Rue. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, yeah, that was Rue. Yeah, yeah. I love Rue. Yeah, Rue yeah made she's great. Cry too well, in well, that get, in, get into your specifics that you were uh, mentioning in your overall thoughts here, Kevin. What do you want to hit on this specifically yeah. from the trailer? Okay, so a couple things. First yeah. of all, they could finally kill, kill or capture the person in the end. And then, like, you know, uh, what, like when Malcolm says, "What? how do you know that all the dinosaurs are female? Do they check under the dinosaur skirts? <laughs> like, the maybe they'll check the eyes and see there's no Sith eyes. They'll be like, ah, oh, it's just... Like you're not, you mean to say that uh, maybe there could have been red lightsaber wielding enemies before that were, yeah. maybe acolytes mean they are followers of the Sith, but they're not the Sith. So like he, Adi Moody could really be like, yeah, they're still like, well, well yeah, what about, you know, we could cut to the scene where it's like, well, what about that female Sith from uh, 200 years ago? And he'd be like, oh, well, she didn't have Sith eyes. Like it's, she was just an acolyte, right. whatever. Right. So you can do that. Here's my uh, big thing. Okay. I think. I think that, um, and I, now I'm con- feeling confirmed by it. Someone said that from <laughs> you're the feeling toy, confirmed. So, <laughs> someone said that the toy of Carrie Ann Moss's figure is the yeah. same saber from the poster, which is blood. Oh, so, okay. I think. Remember when Matthew Fox was the pilot in Lost, but originally it was supposed to be Michael Keaton. Right. He was going to be in the first episode and then die by the smoke monster or whatever. It's going to be this stunt casting, right? Not stunt yeah. casting, but a big casting. I think Carrie Ann Moss ain't making it out of the pre the for the beginning. I think her oh. murder is going to be start sparking the rest of the story with everyone else. Really? By the way, you can preserve canon. Everybody's got to die. I get that. I feel like everybody yeah. in that um, <laughs> uh, shot at the end, they're all done for anyway. So, okay. um, and I think maybe it, it maybe that final. Um, I'm sorry, I don't. I'm not familiar with the names yet, but the main character, um, yeah, Roe or 
Vanessa um, Rowe is not a main character, but she is in it. No, no, I'm, I'm thinking of the main uh, uh, actor who was from. Um, is that uh, what you're talking about? Squid, Squid Game. That guy. Oh, oh uh, Tony Sung Jai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His character, I yeah. believe, Soul. Yeah, yeah. I think if, if anything, yeah. you could have him finally face off with the Sith, and they both kill each other, and no one knows their secret. They both die in some epic Ronin type samurai way. So I'm, I'm getting into fan. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah. the trailer just came out, and you're already trying to digest yeah, I, the I'm entire thing about the thing. <laughs> but I do think I feel like uh, the Carrie Ann Moss character because uh, it's interesting yeah. that they chose her saber if that's true on the poster, and it's full of blood. So yeah. maybe she doesn't. And do we see? We don't see her in any other circumstances in that trailer. So um, no, we, I think yeah, that would be an epic uh, kind of opening too. So who knows? Okay. But um, as far as the other discourse, I'll let Frank start to touch on that. But I think that you could still preserve that line. Okay. You know, look, they made Obi Wan after years and years. Obi Wan, Obi Wan said, Obi or Vader said, Obi Wan once thought as you do, and they were able to make that one line work, right? Yeah, By saying, yeah. so I still think you can make that line work. Yeah, you can't have like a Sith die on record, and it's a big public thing, and or maybe the Sith Council. Maybe the Sith Council, after they discover it and stop it, they're like, we should not tell the other Jedi. Let's right. hang on to this information for ourselves because already the Jedi have always had some questionable decision making, like with Anakin's training and stuff. So maybe the two top people, maybe Yoda is like, oh, though, let's not tell anyone. So then Yoda has this dark secret throughout the rest of the years. Changes right. Yoda. I'll yeah, stop with the fan speculation. Isn't Amanda Stenberg's character supposed to be a maze? Isn't she supposed to be a former Jedi? Because, like, from what? What I'm yeah, assuming geez. is that opening shot of of uh, of their of Tony there doing the counseling. She's the young girl that says, "I see fire." Yeah, uh, and she eventually becomes who she becomes and has those fight sequences that we see uh, in the trailer. So, um, Frank, what stood out to you specifically now uh, that you liked or didn't like? What are the things you want to hit on? Um, the thing that specifically stood out to me was the the fight choreography. Yeah. Um, that I'm really interested interested to see, uh, just how deep they get into the kung fu martial arts type of mm. choreography in the show, and kind of demonstrate in the way the prequels did about kind of you know how George described these Jedi are at the height of their lightsaber um, abilities, and right. now we're that we're a hundred years pre Phantom Menace. What does the fight style look like? And are there little, you know, nuggets, seeds of like, this is what it, it evolves into. If it even gets that deep, I don't know. But I'm really curious how they're going to utilize that style and tell a story within the battle because there's a scene with Amanda Stenberg and um, Squid Game. I forget his, I forget his oh, name. Oh, yeah, Lee Jung Jai. Uh, Lee Jung Jai. Yeah. Lee Jung Jai. Uh, there's a scene in there where he catches the kick. And I'm yeah. curious about the, the, the story fights, if you will, if I, if I can phrase it that way, the fight story, um, and how and how uh, invested we'll be in, in with with these characters that are all new to us. Most of them, obviously, outside of Vanessa Rowe, who's yeah. been appeared in, in the books, uh, but now is at a later stage in in her life in the in the galaxy. So um, I'm curious how they're going to handle the Sith aspect, obviously, because yeah, that line is you know the, the sith have been extinct for a millennium um okay but <laughs> i i i i i'm curious how they're going to tackle it i have faith in leslie headland and how she's going to approach it because uh, over the over the past several months you know I've really read about how big of a star wars fan she is yeah special edition all this uh, eu stuff uh, so it's not like she doesn't know her stuff it's right. not like she doesn't know what she's doing what she's getting herself into and people can have their opinions about Leslie Headland, and that's that can be that. But yeah. I fully expect uh, it to be approached in a way where you go, that was pretty smart. That's a good idea. This works. She nailed it. Um, so I'm just going to sit back, wait and see. Everyone else can go uh, argue and, and, and yell till they're blue in the face. That's <laughs> fine by me. Yeah. Uh, I will just sit back and enjoy the show <laughs> and see what it presents to me before I make any kind of proclamations of uh, she ruined my star wars <laughs> what a novel concept uh, let's take a look at the, is this is this octo is this octo i mean am i wrong on this is this octo i mean are we i'm off base on this kevin because it certainly looks like those jagged edges that we saw in the sequel trilogy and certainly yeah. the idea of closing your mind as lee jung jay was saying at the beginning and i, I misspoke and said his name is tony it's lee lee jung jay 
when he is delivering the um, uh, the lessons to the kids there, it's very similar to what, how Luke is teaching Ray in The Last Jedi, this closing her eyes, and it comes from out from within and all of that. So certainly they're trying to at least touch base with the sequel trilogy. So it would make sense, right, that we go to Act 2? Yeah, so the main character is Soul, so we don't have to keep messing up his name, sure. so I don't have to. <laughs> I Fair just enough. look it up, Soul. Um, yeah, I do believe that that could be Act 2, and I, I think that's cool. We'll get some more Porgs. Who doesn't want more Porgs? Hell right? yeah, Porgs. Um, I had seen uh, some speculation that that could be near where the cave is, and so we get a little yeah. explanation for where that dark side cave is. Maybe there's going to be a duel there and someone dies there. Um, <laughs> in early uh, – in in well i know you laugh my friend i know you just <laughs> love everyone's gotta die so everyone's gotta die Every you, episode, you haven't seen my like kotor movies yet they all die in my kotor movies <laughs> even when they're not dead in the game um no but like uh one of the original in the legends canon mm. um the tree and the cave in dagobah uh is because a great sith lord died there and that's why there's dark side energy in there so oh okay they mine things all the time from uh yeah so they could uh, sure. have this epic duel on octu and kind of have that synergy between the sequel trilogy and this. Um, that's very mm -hmm. possible. I remember hearing, and like, I think it's like, we just got to trust the filmmaker, right? Like she, yeah. I remember there was an article where she said that this, it, it's going to be the best parts of, not the best parts. I don't, think she, I don't think she said that, but she said it's very much a cross of Mando and Andor. And that gives yeah. me great hope. Um, yeah. And I do like, and I, and I think that Jeff Snyder tweeted about it, or you did Roka. Um, mm. Where it's okay that one of our writers on the team is not a Star yes. Wars fan at all. Yes. Let's well, get the yeah. story working for non fans too, yeah. and so everything uh, is synergy. Synergy because we've seen when you know when only not fanboy, just the wrong word, but like when only yeah. people that are too close to the material are they they could get um, really in a position where the, they're not doing the best story writing that they can. Yeah. So yeah. Um, all in all, I'm excited. Like I said, I wasn't necessarily blown away by it, but I didn't hate it. Like, yeah. you know what it is? It's like, um, and I, I liked Dune 2 a lot. Like Dune 2 was great. I wasn't like blown away by it. I understand why some people would be blown away by it. Right. For me, it was good. Um, and I think with this trailer, like it was the same thing. Like I was going in with these high expectations and it's still good. I'm still excited for, I'm not writing it off. Um, right. And I am excited for the the fight. And I think it's interesting uh, how close like that. That's a, looks like a Sith dagger that they might even tie that into yeah. um, Rise of Skywalker, no, right? Um, she's she's <laughs> oh, moving oh. that like, oh, oh, God. Man. Are you laughing at my theory? I'm bro? just saying, you man, this, this series is going to piss off everybody. It's just at one <laughs> point or another. <laughs> <laughs> we know that well, there's a certain YouTuber that's not going to be happy with it. But uh, yeah, so I think that's uh, I'm, I'm excited for it. I just hope that... Um, you know, and I, I love fan service too. I'm sure Yoda will be in there at some point. Um, and yeah. uh, yeah. why not? Next like, question. Uh, just we're, don't give him a full head of hair or anything like that. Like, <laughs> right. right? Like Grogu is 50, right? And he still looks right. like he probably did. With, like, just don't give Yoda like a mohawk or any and, and this fan. Oh, RPG. actually, I would be down for that. I, part down I mean, maybe, part maybe down when he's middle. like 30 or maybe when he's like 250 years old, but how old yeah. is he going to be? He's going to be, he's, he's like, he's like middle aged Yoda. I don't know. Like a pocket. He protection. should have like the gray. Like what I'm getting. Well, yeah. I'll really oh, give him a beard. That. Give him a beard. Yeah. Him there him you go. <laughs> yeah, what about you, John? What do you think about what, what, all this? Which what? About what? About this like uh, legacy characters in it oh. and the fan discourse. No, I'm I'm a fan of not having legacy discourses. Uh, or, sorry, I'm not, I'm a fan of not having legacy characters pop up and unless you need to have them pop up, right? Like, was I happy that they alluded to Leia in the most recent series of Ahsoka? No, uh, I would like to have seen her, but. Yeah. using c3po i guess that's your way around it and whatever but if, if if that second season happens we gotta see a leia this is the thing that's frustrating to me is that so much of the fandom is against this idea of cg or bringing a recast that we are now being we're missing out on logical things that would happen if these actors were still alive and they could get them to do the project they would have to show up now with yoda you can play a certain way with yoda and so to me i think He's the one of all of the of all the legacy characters that I think I would anticipate would show up. Christian and I talked about this on Monday that we thought on the big thing on his on his channel that we thought that we'd see some silhouette of Yoda or some reference to Yoda, but not seeing him at all. I thought was a bit of a surprise, but I anticipate he'll be in 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 the show at some point. Um, what about you, Frank? Do you think uh, we'll see Yoda or any of the legacy characters here in the show? It would be kind of weird not to see Yoda. Because yeah, it's still yeah. at this point, at this point, he would still be a, a 
pretty big factor in the Jedi Order, or at right. least coming up the ranks like, hey, this guy is really, you know, moving up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see where he's at in 100 years, you know, um, that yeah. kind of thing. At the very least, at the very least, I re- outside of Yoda, I don't really expect to see anybody else. I, I don't, without seeing the show, I don't know why we would. Based on the premise, yeah. it's, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't seem like, and, and the, based on the casting. Mas you know, Kanata, maybe? In the, <laughs> I mean... Sure, throw any CG character you want in there. That's fair game. Sure, yeah, it's yeah, an easy yeah. thing to do in terms of bringing them into the story. But does it make sense? I I don't know. I haven't seen the show yet, so we'll yeah. have to wait and see. But in terms of Yoda or anybody else on the console that was... Sure, I think they're fair game and plausible to show up in the show. I don't mm-hmm. think so in a, in a major way because of the story they're telling and the implication of that Sith line. I think you remove yeah. them as far far as you can while still including them because it makes sense. Um, you protect that part of the, the, the canon, if you will. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not really expecting, you know, uh, big name, you know, like legacy characters. I'm not expecting like even any any mention of Palpatine. I'm not right. expecting I'm really not expecting anything like Plagueis wise, to tell you the truth. Huh. So uh, I'm really just in it for this story is a murder mystery story. Yeah. You know, Who's let's see where it goes. Not? Right, right, and see where you know the, the thought about the what you're talking about too, Roca. Before I forget, mm-hmm. with the Mandoverse, and like you're right with Leia and Luke. It's like imagine if they were doing the MCU, and you you had this great series of Avengers movies yeah. with like Captain America and Tony Stark, and then suddenly you're doing this series, but and there's these life of changing things with the Earth going on, and yeah. you have no storyline reason why Tony Stark and Captain America aren't around to save the day. It's because the actors are. <sighs> no longer yeah. here and they don't want to recast like they wouldn't do that like it's time if they haven't been written out in the story like it, it's time to get it's time to address the elephant in the room luke's got to be out there yeah. uh leia maybe han did walk away from everything for a while well that was after kylo was born so yeah, yeah, yeah. uh I, I agree as far as that goes and yeah I, I don't need fan service i don't know how long a stint is on the jedi council maybe there maybe he's there's a statute of limitations so <laughs> yoda is not on the council right now so he can't be on there maybe we'll get plo Koon. i don't know these age oh, things the but Koon. man i get a little or not plo Koon, sorry um yarl poof let's get some yarl poof in there yeah. you know me i'm a big yarl poof guy but yeah um <laughs> what do we think of this what do we, do we like this do we like uh, a wookie jedi you know we just had um oh god i forget the character's name there in uh in um uh Chris Anton. Match. Chris Anton. Anton. Match. right, right Gungi, yeah Gungi, oh no i'm sorry yeah. I'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking of the the bounty Chris Anton and Gungi, but Gungi, yeah yeah but we saw so like another wookie jedi Joining the the ranks here, uh, an interesting decision to bring that character on, and of course, getting uh, 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 Jonas Suotomo, who did uh, um, oh, really? Chewbacca at, for, yeah. in the sequel trilogy and in um, in uh, uh, Solo, an interesting choice. But it's Jedi Master Kelnaka, that's his name. Do you like this idea of having a Wookiee involved in this one here, uh, Frank? Do you like uh, do you like them kind of not going legacy, but kind of going legacy by having a Wookiee and sure. making him think of Chewbacca? Yeah, I, I do like that in the show. It's seemingly from the trailer that there's quote unquote alien Jedi, you know, whether yeah, you have yeah, a Wookiee yeah. or other different types of species uh, as Jedi as we saw in the like the the children um, classroom setting. There's a couple different looking aliens and yeah. and, and another, Daphne Keene plays looks like some sort of another alien right. species I don't recognize. Cool. So yeah, cool. so yes, yeah. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing different um species be jedi because yeah. you know obviously original trilogy and prequel or prequels and and sequel trilogy we didn't really get a whole lot of alien jedi outside of like we got Coleman the, Trevor, the greatest jedi of all time <laughs> right. <laughs> dinosaur dinosaur, right 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 dinosaor jedi is my I, favorite jedi of all you beat yeah, me to yeah, it yeah. kevin i'm sorry you beat me to it but i was gonna get there don't you um, speak his name dinosaur spidey yeah exactly this close to ending the clone wars this close <laughs> before that they even close. Started, he'd be the greatest jedi of all time you Damn. He'd have statues in the middle of Coruscant Square. He went for right? glory. He went for glory. You can't blame the guy. You can't blame yeah. the guy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, what they do with these new, um, these jet and like different perspectives of the Jedi life and what yeah. each species brings to that, you know, their, their, their life view towards the Jedi way and the order. And that's another thing I'm really curious about is how they're going to portray the Jedi order at this point yeah. and yeah. kind of starting the downfall um, yeah. as we know that it, you know, eventually happens there. 
Oh, well, clearly they call not this era the fall of the Jedi too, right? Like they have the High yeah. Republic, and then the next one's called the Fall of the Jedi. So, yeah, clearly not aware, possibly of um, of the of the Sith there in some way, and we'll see how that how they explain that because, like as you said earlier, Kevin, the Kiati Mundi line talking about we haven't seen Jedi in a millennium. What does that mean? You know, because millennium's a thousand years, I think. So, like, where where are we going with that? Uh, and no, Luke they- kissed Leia in Empire, so whatever. Yeah, they exactly. need to change the line to we haven't seen the Sith in a willen- millennium, <laughs> listen, and then listen, George, <laughs> George didn't know Vader was dead, so like, you know, it wasn't until later. So come on now, yeah, I knew it from the beginning. I knew that Qui Gon was there too. <laughs> exactly. Let's look at this. You talk about other creatures, Frank, and, and Frank. I'll swing or uh, uh, Kevin. I'll swing back to you on this one. We get Jodie Turner Smith's character. Get a little bit of time in the trailer, Mother An- Anisea, and she is described as a force user who is neither Jedi nor Sith and leads an order of women. Um, uh, and the uh, detail has been added describing their group as a coven of witches. And the only witches we know, as Star Wars Net is pointing out here in their breakdown, are the Night Sisters. But could this be a coven of women and niches, witches who are positive with, like, all with the Jedi, helping the Jedi? What do you anticipate uh, we might see from this? You know, I don't know. I, I don't have much on that um i thought that her line was interesting she talks about power right yes and that's sounds not like, good or bad it sounds like hope. another guy we know that doesn't age well um, <laughs> i mean i guess he did it was the lightning it was the lightning yeah um, but uh <laughs> yeah I, I don't know what to think of that i mean we don't know that much about it anyway but i do like right. that they are continuing to go into this like other type of magic you know like not quite all the way Lord of the Rings, right. but embracing a different type of, it's a big galaxy out there. And, and I'll get into some of my criticisms with uh, uh, Bad Batch later. It's like mm-hmm. such a big galaxy. We should be seeing great, like new crazy things, especially like, uh, so this one, especially when t- t- eight, I mean, th- maybe it's my yeah. daughter. Hello, Kira. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, she's watching Bluey. She's excited. She <laughs> sings at every opening <laughs> credit and it's like 15 minute episodes. So it's Bluey. Minute. Um, yeah. But <laughs> anyways, yeah. Uh, what do you think, Frank? Like, I, I don't have much to say because I, I haven't made any thoughts about it. But I think mm-hmm. that I don't think they revealed the main villain in here anyway. I don't think that Rue, I'm just going to call her Rue for now. I don't think Rue is the only one uh, mm-hmm. or so I think there's a lot more. But could it be this one, this this woman here, the leader of the witches, or could it be someone else we haven't seen? What do you think? So in regards to these witches, yeah. I think it'd be interesting if these were witches that were native to this galaxy that we're in, oh, as opposed yeah. to the Death Mary okay. witches from the Peridia, you know, yeah. from Ahsoka. I think that would be interesting if, you know, maybe because um, we don't know exactly. I don't know how long the Death Mary Night Sisters have been in this galaxy, yeah. but either way, they could they could still dabble into some night sister lore and whatnot and still bring in this coven and i don't know maybe they go extinct because they're on the wrong side of this battle or they choose wrong or something something like that yeah. and it goes back to that 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 power struggle and they perhaps maybe try and choose a side that they think is gonna hold on to the power or grab the power and they right. maybe they choose wrong i don't know but it is interesting that they're bringing in um or introducing at least this group i'm really curious to see what they're all about and yeah how is it is there death mary-esque magic along with them i don't know um but i'm looking forward to seeing what kind of weird mysticism they might bring to the show because in ahsoka i thought it worked really well yeah. in this type of show it might be a little more I don't know, uh, a little more dramatic, if you will, even though it was yeah. somewhat dramatic in Ahsoka as well. But yeah. yeah, it could be a self-contained story that doesn't bleed out to the larger story, which is how it can maintain um, the timeline and what people are complaining about, you know, in the canon and all of that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, like Frank said earlier, I'm just – this looks good. I'm excited for it. I want to see more. This is just a teaser trailer. We're going to get a little bit more, and it's coming out in June, so we've got a little bit of time before we see it. So I, I, I'm curious to see more of what the story is going to be. I'm um, sure yeah. there'll be yeah. a, a piece of marketing with Yoda on it by the time June 4th rolls around. Oh, probably, probably. I'm sure there will be. So no. it's like Somewhere they're going to do a Hayden with it. Or this, is Hayden in a, this is Hayden in um, Ahsoka. Because you got a solid. Everybody you knows got a, it. We're just waiting for what episode he's going to pop up. Because you got to sell it to the mainstream <laughs> audience out there that, exactly. hey, Exactly. There's a little Yoda. You know this guy, you know. Yeah, hey, we got Yoda. We got <laughs> right. Yoda. Is that baby Yoda grown up? Is that Grogu now as an adult? But you know what? I'll honestly say this. I'll uh, while I'll be shocked if Yoda isn't using A the marketing or the show. Yeah. B, I'll I'll kind of be like, 
that was kind of ballsy because yeah. th- this is a major character and if and if it and if he doesn't show up in a way where it makes sense that he didn't show up that'll be even more impressive to me but uh, yeah, that would be crazy. See. That would be like promoting a Justice League movie, but not having Superman in the market. <laughs> that would be stupid. <laughs> we'll see. Um, all right. Well, there you go. That's our, our conversation on the trailer for the Acolyte. I can't believe we went 30 minutes on that one, but that tells you how much there's the, to, there was to talk about from a minute and a half trailer. <laughs> right. So we'll probably go three hours when it's a three minute trailer, for God's sakes. But let's take a quick break. We'll jump into uh, the back half of the show here with a couple more stories uh, here on the Jedi Way, and we'll be right back uh, right after this. All right, let's jump back into things, gentlemen. Uh, let's bring it up. Patty Jenkins, she has she was on a podcast here recently, the Talking Pictures podcast uh, with Ben Mankiewicz there, and dropped this bomb that uh, she had left to do star to do star to do Wonder Woman three. Uh, she left Rogue Squadron, rather Star Wars, to do Wonder Woman three, and uh, when that didn't work out, after you know her she her and uh, James Gunn and Peter Safran couldn't come to a a decision about going forward to Wonder Woman three. She went back to Star Wars. Lucasfilm and I, quote, she says, we're like, oh, we got to finish the deal. We finished the deal right as the strike was beginning. So now I owe a draft of Star Wars. So we will see what happens there. Who knows? They have a hard job in front of them. What's the first movie since the sequel trailer they're going to do? They have other directors who have been working, but I'm now back on doing Road Squadron. We'll see what happens. We need to get it to where we're both super happy with it. You know, I started with Kevin, so I'm going to start with you on this one, Frank. Your thoughts when you hear, oh, right, there you go. Here's his gift. But you hear your thoughts, Frank, uh, when you hear Betty Jenkins saying this and talking about how she is going to be back on Rogue Squadron and that, and that we need to be happy with it before it goes forward. Yeah, so great. It's in development. Like yeah. a lot of other things in Hollywood <laughs> that are in development that never get made. This could be one of those things. It is interesting, though, to bring it out bring it up in public on a podcast yes. you know oh. as as a way to be like hey i really want to make this thing so i'm going to put it out there that i'm writing a script for rogue squadron remember that movie that remember that sizzle reel i made <laughs> i yeah. don't want to you know uh, i want to make sure that comes to fruition now so yeah i think it's i think it is a, a good sign that it's in back in development that's great do i have any other hopes beyond that that it's going to get made not really because okay. they have so many other stuff lined up movie wise, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know where <laughs> this movie wouldn't come out to what? 2030 or 2032. Okay. Like be a while, yeah. right. It's going to be a long time before you could put that somewhere in the schedule. So great. They have plenty of time to work on it and get it to a spot where they, you know, feel great about it. Ask me about this in four years, I guess, <laughs> you know, to be honest, you know? Yeah. I mean, Kevin Snyder said when we talked about it last week on the hot mics, it broke just before we started the show that this is just a writer turning in a draft. And although Matthew Robinson is listed as the writer on IMDb, it might've been in the contract that she owed a draft. So you and I are both pro, 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 pro wrestling fans. I think Frank's a pro wrestling fan as well. We know the term going into business for yourself. Mm. And it sounds like Patty Jenkins was going into business for herself on this podcast because this was not followed up with an announcement officially by Star Wars to say, we are welcome Patty Jenkins back to the fold here. We're going to be working on Rogue Squadron. She'll be an essential part of making this happen. And there was silence from Lucasfilm and Disney and Star Wars after these, uh, this uh, uh, podcast happened. So clearly she didn't, I don't know if she had permission to say these kinds of things, but still technically correct. So not necessarily violating an NDA. So what are your thoughts on all of this in her comments here? I mean, I'm holding up for the radio listeners here. I'm holding up the <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, GIF. 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 Whatever. GIF. Whatever you want to say. GIF. Yeah. Whatever you want to say. Look, at me. I got my mic here. I'm like Howard Stern. Hey, Robin. Oh L- oh listen, God. Robin. Oh Come over here to the studio, Robin. No, uh, <laughs> no uh, <laughs> with the look, she learned she might have learned from the best. Who got into business with themselves and actually got a Snyder cut finally released in 2020? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on. Snyder. You needed so three Another scoring person from management DC right when Wonder Woman 3 gets uh, taken from her. Uh, She's, you know, saying, okay, I still got this Rogue Squadron. No one wants a Rogue Squadron trailer more than me, right? Frank knows I edited a KOTOR Top Gun opening. Like, that was great. Uh, 
rogue squadron with Top Gun theme where they're on a suicide mission to get plans or destroy a freaking reactor or whatever. Right, right. Like, that's not the Death Star. You know what I mean? Just something epic, like, would be so sick. Showing the speed. One of the best parts of The Last Jedi that people some always seem to forget. Remember when they really showed the speed on Poe Dameron's uh, X-Wing in that opening sequence? Sure. Mm-hmm. Like, Whoa, baby! And you see the thing, and he does that cool, like, maneuver where he, like flip slides yeah yeah it's so sick so imagine a whole movie with that with hot shot pilots the best of the best and they have to go into some crazy nebula and do it so <laughs> uh, again me uh you know i love you all know, my fan speculation and my my fan casting but um i hope it happens i do believe that she's probably just speaking out of turn a little bit because especially yeah. there's no official thing kind of followed that but they didn't go out there and deny it either so that's a good point they didn't they didn't fall on either side of this that's for sure yeah, yeah so you well, yeah, because they're, they're not committed to making it they're just committed to receiving a draft from her like, right that's right, basically right. it they're like yeah that's true you you owe us a draft where where's it at yeah. yeah i could write a muppet script tonight and, and send it over to jim henson studios they're not gonna make it tomorrow <laughs> yeah, i don't know why i chose that curious thing to say muppets take muppets take Florida. We want to win the election. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they Muppets take South Beach. Right. right, right. Yeah. Spring break. Yeah, spring break. <laughs> spring break. Muppets. That's more believable. Muppets gone wild on South Beach. Oh, my yeah, God. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, you're looking at this whole situation. She's like, I didn't know I had to rein both of you, and this is crazy. But like, you're in this whole situation, and you're like, well, does this make sense? with um her saying we you know this is the thing i think it's important and she's no dummy patty she's smart she's been on the business a long long time she understood she understands what words to use in certain moments and for her to say until we are happy that's ownership we is ownership now you can say sure. well technically you know she's on the team she's just submitting a draft so it is a we thing but the way she's saying it sounded to me when I listened to it like there's a little bit of possession on this thing. And so I'm curious to see how much of that was her maybe passive-aggressively strong-arming Disney or Lucasfilm a little bit into getting her back into the conversation of this. Because remember, I mean, the Wonder Woman thing brought her out of TV, right? Like she had been doing TV for a long time. Monster, a fantastic film. And yes, it was unfair uh, that Patty hadn't got other shots to do feature films, mm. uh, and but she plied her tra- trade in TV, and she was doing great in TV. This Wonder Woman film brought her out, and then we had the sequel, and now everyone was like, okay, we're good. The Star Wars thing fell apart. Uh, the uh, w- the Wonder Woman 3 fell apart, and so it's like, okay, where do we go from here? All right, let me talk about myself as being back in Star Wars and connected to a massive franchise. So I find that interesting. And Kathleen Kennedy has said that she really wants to focus on the women point of the women's point of view in Star Wars. So this was maybe um, uh, Patty pushing a little bit, going like, hey, I'm out here, I'm still available, you know, this kind of thing. So I don't know, yeah. just looking at it. So we will see, we'll see, I'll keep tabs on it. As Frank said, uh, many things are in development in Hollywood. How many of them actually come to fruition, especially in Star Wars, uh, is yeah. kind of a rarity. So a lot of, I'd like a lot to of announce people. my, uh, I'd like to announce my KOTOR movie is being made by Lucasfilm in 2029. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm yeah. just throwing it out there, maybe it'll happen. Here's Dave Filoni going, no, shot of that in the uh, Ryan Johnson trilogy. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> 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 hey, they still haven't said that's not happening. They have just like they I said, wanted, just like they haven't said about Rogue Squadron. Trilogy. So. Broom Boy trilogy. <laughs> yeah, they want it. They don't. Not gonna say it's not gonna happen until until he's dead or until they make it. And then when they do make it, he'll be like, they can be like, we never said it wasn't gonna happen. And all these sites right. <laughs> said that we weren't gonna do it, but we did. It just took some time. I hope um, he gets another shot. He's a fantastic filmmaker. So I agree. I yeah. agree. All right, let's move on to Kevin's favorite part of the show, and uh, that is the Bad Batch. That's right, the Bad Batch. Uh, uh, we're going to review this particular episode here. As we look at uh, wrapping up this uh, episode of the Jedi Way, season three, episode eight. This was an interesting episode. Bad territory here. We had a number of characters come back into the uh, into the fold here with Fee Genoa showing up here. Fennec Shan was involved in this, and this was all about discovering why the M count stuff was important. We saw Omega teaching crosshair meditation. Hello. We saw Hunter and Omega, of course, having their conversations about the future and the M count situation. As I mentioned, Fennec Shan looking badass. Ming Na Wen doing another wonderful job. Uh, she convinces Hunter and Wrecker to go down on this planet and fight these crazy alligators. And by the end, she says, well, trust me or don't trust me. I can get the information to you. Uh, and then the last shot we have is Fennec Shan talking to some um, hologram of some uh, mystery person Boba Fett. saying they're looking for 
this oh. information and we'll find out what happens. So, Kevin, I guess we'll start with you because you said you didn't like the episode. So go ahead. We'll, we'll start negative and get to positive by the end of the show. Go ahead. I didn't say I didn't like it, but hold what? on a second. Rewind the tape. Rewind the tape. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm going to resurrect an old bit from uh, our earliest episodes of Scoundrels, Inc. Oh, hold okay. Oh, great. I oh, have great. a piece of paper here. And what does oh, that God. say? Oh, no. Filler. Wow. Wow. Wow, Kevin. Really? Wow. Filler really, episode. Kevin? You're going to feel like such a dummy. 18 at the end of the episode seasons. Make we 10, <laughs> make 9, make 8. Deadwood had 12. Ozark had 10. Succession. Right. Make shorter seasons so you don't have to have this. Because at the end of the day, spoiler alert, he's yeah. going to double cross him anyway. It was a mission of the week that I checked out mentally. The second I, I was like, yeah, I'll help you out. But first, you got to do something for me. That's literally like half the KOTOR missions when you're playing and you're doing side quests to get Fair experience points. points. Yeah. Um, the mission, that said, execution, everything was great. And I liked when they went back to uh, the other planet with Omega and everyone like that. Yeah, but for me, that. it just felt so much like the earlier seasons where it's like, that's when you can just condense. You, I mean, it's cool. Like, the, 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 But did we see anything really that spectacularly new or fresh or inventive in star yeah. Wars. No, it felt like 50 other uh, ep sci-fi episodes or many of the clone wars episodes. And look, I'm not hating it as far as I wasn't entertained, mm -hmm. but like the second that you go on these missions where it's, it's coming from an era of like playing video games and stuff or making movies based on video games where I had to avoid that, where I was like, okay, how do we turn this mission to get this thing to not feel like a video game when I'm making a movie out of it with the KOTOR movies. Yeah. So uh, it just, for me, um, that just felt uh, the mission of the week. We knew it was going to come back. Eventually you have 18 episodes. It's like, just make 10 Make yeah. eight episodes. Make it feel special. That's why I don't understand the hate about Acolyte real quick. Forgot to mention it. How people are complaining that it's only going to be 30-minute episodes, 35-minute episodes. Mm -hmm. Man, the NFL season's great. Everybody watches every Sunday because there's 17 games in the regular season now. Or they added it, 18, whatever it is. Like, yeah. it, it's not like, and I love baseball, but, like, there's 162 games. Oh, I miss a couple games. It's fine. You, you catch on. So, for me, less is more. This felt like a filler episode. That's why I re I hadn't had to whip this out for a while. Um, but yeah, uh, and the last time I did, it was for shocking an episode of bad batch, uh, in back in wow. two years ago. So, um, the, the stuff with Omega and the force feeling very much like, uh, um, the Oct two sequence with Ray and Luke mm -hmm. was kind of a cool thing. Um, and yeah, yeah, she, her M count, I uh, mean, and we have a bet, Frank, I <laughs> thought they were going to say midi chlorine. I was waiting. Like, what is that so, anyway? Uh, yeah. The sentence, what is that anyway? Was like, asked. Yeah. And all someone had to say is, oh, midi, midi chlorines. Everyone knows that it's in your science right. book from yeah. Coruscant high. Come on. Do you don't remember that? <laughs> yeah. So they still haven't said it. I still think they're going to say it before the end of the year. And it's, it's going to be a big pop moment. Um, and yeah, what do you, what do you think? Uh, I think I'll, I'll toss it over to you, Roka first. You've been such a good oh. host. Let's hear your opinion here on this, yeah. what I like to call filler episode. Oh, boy. Oh, the whole well, season it. has been excellent. This is the season I was waiting for for the Bad Batch, right? Finally, there are stakes. Finally, there's a real feeling that this is dangerous. Uh, bringing Crosshair back into the fold, which wasn't easy. I like how they did that. And you've got, listen, for me, the reason the season has worked the most is there are a lot of military references. And I don't mean forts or tactics or anything like that. I mean, like, people who have survived wars and battles and lost people, lost soldiers, or been damaged by the experience. Or even, if you want to go back to World War II, been experimented on, right? Like, we've sure. seen it. We've heard these horrible stories. And those things have been permeating throughout this season. And I've really enjoyed that. Now, yeah. I agree with you, Kevin. The, sex, the stuff on Silar was very much... Adventure of the week, uh, villain of the week. But I think because they've been so great this season, I was okay with it. I was okay with, you know, prehistoric crocodiles or whatever those things were. Uh, essentially, they went to Florida and, had, and were in one of the boats, <laughs> essentially. And they were to go, to go, Muppets yeah. take the swamps. Yep. <laughs> I, I don't go in the swamp water either in Florida, so I understand Fennec Shane's <laughs> point. But, like, all of that was just to get to, okay, capturing this uh, crafty villain, Silar, or, or whatever bounty, got him and put him away. Great. Okay, cool. But it was all leading to the fact that she has information. So it means that Fennec is going to play a bigger role in the next few episodes at some point. So I like that Fennec's not done, and it wasn't a filler episode. That. But the thing I liked the most about the episode, or what I focused on, was the um, conversation between Crosshair and Omega. And that and that Hunter doesn't give her just something to pass the time. She He legitimately gives her a very tall task, which is 
Get Crosshair to find a way to ask for help. And that's a very big deal for people in the military, people who've suffered any kind of trauma, even if you're not in the military, any PTSD, whatever you have your life. Asking for help is never easy. And so for people to do that, especially someone like Crosshair, who's very much a self-sufficient person, I think that was a great thing to have Omega, who's really the only one that could have ever gotten through to Crosshair like this, to get him to kind of confront this stuff and look at this stuff, having the uh, the uh, droid tell him, you know, it's something that might be in your head and him getting upset about that. Those are things that people have uh, in real life have dealt with, with people who've dealt through trauma because they all think they can fix themselves or they all think they can figure it out. But the truth is sometimes you do need help. And meditation is a super important thing if you can make it a practice in your life. So to have that, I enjoyed that aspect of the show much more than I did the Silar stuff. But I didn't mind the Silar stuff because they earned a venture of the week. Your thoughts here, Frank, on the on the episode. You know, John, I think you said it perfectly because I, I think I'm pretty much in a in alignment with how you viewed oh, okay. the episode and how I took the episode as well. I think, you know, Kevin, you can take your filler paper and – and 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 crumple it up when you get to the crosshair and omega stuff because that that is immensely um mm. character building and and building upon what they've set out with speci- specifically the relationship with omega and crosshair yeah. and more probably specifically crosshair and his transformation i think all of that is very important to mm. the character of crosshair um you know you see omega how much she cares for crosshair and 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 now you're openly seeing crosshair and how much he cares for Omega, you know, they're yeah, on a chip yeah. and, and he's like, who's that now? Uh, when did this happen? Yeah. And like, yeah, we're okay. I'm pretty good just staying here and we'll stay here. Me and Omega will stay here and you guys can go off and do that. You know? So he's very, he's a little more outward with his concern for, for Omega, which yeah. wasn't the case, you know, three, four or five episodes ago um, or last season for that matter. So I do like seeing the transformation of crosshair each episode we get him in and the interactions he has with Omega, as well as now, you know, Hunter and Wrecker and yeah. all their members that'll show up, you know, as Echo or, or, or Rex or what have you. So I think uh, that part of the episode was key for the rest of the season. The stuff on Siler and going after the bounty, that's just good, fun, um, yeah. pulpy Star Wars action. Just happened to be animated, so it didn't really catch your eye, Kevin, because it wasn't live How do you action. Know? I love animation. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're into, you're into the, yeah, the crosshair stuff is beautiful and fantastic and yeah. like but filler to you like that but filler it's gonna you. pay off big time and just when you're getting into it just when you're feeling for these characters let's cut away and go to anaconda and anaconda in space that's just good story special thing that's just good structure and nothing happens nothing's accomplished in their mission because all they all that gets accomplished is that she's gonna uh, screw them over which i'd like to dabble on uh, i actually actually i don't think i don't think she's gonna screw, them, gonna screw yeah. them over yeah she already did she told this mystery man this mystery eh, man it's gonna be boba fett and when boba fett realizes that these are it. his own kin his own people and he meets his sister omega he's oh. gonna make the choice to say that i'm not gonna go through with this bounty and that's what's going to happen boba fett will be in this series and that will be wow. fantastic there's do more you think he'll say do you think you'll huh? be the one to say metachlorian he's going to be the one to say <laughs> who i think it is i think it's oh, asaj I, I think it's asaj i would have huh oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah true. Interesting. I think it's asaj. It could because be cool she would have a vested boba, interest boba's got to meet omega boba's got to meet omega that'd be great but that'd be awesome before asaj, omega dies because you may yeah. you know she's gonna die <laughs> um but uh i i just want to say before I, I touch on the rest, the global yeah. stuff is still cool. It's just you get so wrapped up into it, and then you go back. And then for me, I'm just saying me. I'm not saying yeah. some, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm not saying it's trash. It's fine. Like you said, it's that pulpy adventure-ish. Um, for me, it's just like that. The, my argument for that is these great moments with Crosshair and Omega could have been extended and then could have been filtered into the next episode. Let's say the next episode is where it's going to start going back into that main – uh, purpose of what they're trying to do is find out about her M count or whatever. Mm. It could always be threaded in to where you just have a one or through two episodes less. Now I'm all for more star Wars. So I don't want to sound like I'm hating on it too much. I'm just I, with the filler episode. It's just, I've been, I, I'm just very uh, sensitive to that where it's like, Oh, here we go with the adventure of the week. And yeah. for me, unfortunately I, I start to doze off, not doze off, but not focus and then when those scenes the good scenes get there it finally gets my attention but then it's like oh we got to go back and it's like i'm not interested in the jokes about oh i just wouldn't get in the water who would get in the water right um but yeah i think overall i do think it would be really cool if it was young young boba fett in the end 
Um, and my only other thing, and I, yeah. I touched upon this early and I don't want to forget is when we're talking about like how like the mate, the magic and the witches and how it's a big galaxy, right? It's such a huge galaxy. You, the, the technology we have on earth, I get it. Cause like we're all here. So one radio is going to look like another radio, but like, yeah. I'm just sick of the pod race droids being in every planet in every corner of the galaxy. Uh, like when was the last if, time we saw them, Kevin? When was the last I time mean, we saw I, them? I know this is a weird hill to die on, <laughs> but like it should just be a different droid. Why does it have to <laughs> like, it's like, those are the pod race droids. They're not just the all purpose. And by the way, if I, we have a Mr. Coffee here, if I get it, oh, maybe there's boy. a Mr. Coffee in Afghanistan on the other side of the globe. But if there's fucking 40 planets away uh, in another galaxy, they're not going to make their coffee in a Mr. Coffee. So why is the pod race droids from Tatooine, which is a far off out of rim territory anyway, which it wouldn't be like a, the, the top of the line thing. Like, yeah. So I, I just I don't know why that bothered me. I'm like, I don't know why. Go in, open the folder of assets and find another droid or create a new asset. Take a couple days i sound really negative about this episode i didn't hate it as much as i'm sounding <laughs> uh, these like, guys okay. know i'm in a different headspace today so okay uh, i think Fair it enough. is bleeding on but i want to say one other oh crazy my God. thing that I, seven things but all right one more thing go ahead yes one positive i gotta have okay, one positive good. Good. it's pretty crazy and cool now to think that with order 66 and hunting the jedi that palpatine wasn't just like hunting jedi younglings and kids for mm -hmm to kill them and wipe them out. He was going to harvest their organs and, and try to get their blood. He was <laughs> desperate to try to clone yeah. himself. That puts on such a darker twist to all those tales that we've always known about him hunting Jedi and stuff like that. He, he was on, he was destined and trying to find out a way to, to be immortal. Um, and that is a crazy dark thought. I saw that on a video. I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to credit whoever said it, but that really like opened my eyes. Great point. Damn. Great point. It's kind of like, uh, you know, if you read the Bible, King Herod, when he, when, if you wrote the Bible with a story there of Moses trying to kill all the firstborn yeah. so that Moses doesn't uh, come up to take his spot or become king. And so those things, you see that happen in a number of stories. Uh, even, you know, nowadays people go crazy about conspiracies about, oh, they're trying to kill the children or do this to the children. So it yeah. can be, it can have uh, things that, echo into our actual real lives some of the darkness in star wars amidst all the fun animation of of uh, crazy space crocodiles but let's <laughs> let's move off the episode here we want to wrap it up uh, with uh, kevin's uh, he's got a couple of tweets that he's a little upset about he's not ramped up enough already. <laughs> i'm not upset about this one at all Speaking stop it massage ventures this was some drunk wookie so take it away <laughs> kevin what's your what's your what's your problem with this tweet or what you what i you did not have a problem if you read okay, my text i said we should talk about this this is great <laughs> All but, right. Well, first of all, Asajj Ventress, we know, is going to be some point in the Bad Batch. Yes. But this gives hope for people that are like, oh, they have larger roles for her. Could it be when she says that um, it's uh, it's just the appetizer for what's to come? Maybe they're talking about she's going to make it into jump into the live action. So I just thought that that was for fans of uh, Nika Futterman and uh, Asajj Ventress. I think it's interesting that she said that, which uh, if okay. it's an appetizer, she's not in this season and then or this series and then going away forever. So, right. um, you know, I'm really excited to see where they can go with her. And also, if you are going to bring her back from such a, you know, meaningful death from the book, um, you got to make it count. So who knows where we'll see her at in the future. But I don't think that her story uh, is going to get finished uh, like Cody Rhodes will at WrestleMania. I don't think his story <laughs> is going to get finished um, in this series. I think that we'll see more of her later, and that's a great thing. What do you guys think? Who would be the rock to Asajj Ventress is trying to fill her story? I finish her story. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, what do you hear? You know, the the person who needs to be the center of attention. Uh, Frank, <laughs> what would be your what would be your thoughts on this? Would you like to see Asajj Ventress come back in a in a bigger role down the road? Do you think they're setting that up here because there were timeline uh discussions as well after the bad batch season three trailer dropped about how the hell Asajj could still be alive so right. your thoughts on this i think you know much much in the way they soft uh launched bad batch in clone wars i mm -hmm. think they might be doing that with an Asajj animated Good series point. and you bring in quinlan boss and you do the whole path thing you can, because if you try to do that type of story mm -hmm. in live action i think that's too costly mm -hmm. i don't I'm like on a series basis you know um because you'd be, I, I would imagine you'd be traversing all over the galaxy and have a bunch of different sets blah 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 animation wise you know i think it you could do a lot more in terms of uh, where you go and the stories you can tell and a little bit easier to do, I think. Um, and yeah. also they probably want to get out another animated show alongside tales of the Jedi and, and whatever, and visions and yeah, good point. Um, yeah. keep, keep that going. And you're right. Cause if you're gonna bring back Asajj, um, you're probably going to want her for more than just like five or six episodes. If, the, if that's how, I don't know how long she's going to appear in this 
you know, Bad Batch. But I would imagine you would you like, oh, if we're going to bring her back, I got some ideas that we could do with this and yeah. kind of that. So, character. Yeah. so why not bring her back for extended yeah. period of time? Wow, time? Disney Plus presents The Path. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. That's the next, next series. I that would be, I mean, I think I got to do something with that because, yeah, right. the, you know, something. <laughs> Come <Yeah>. on. <laughs> they essentially made that like, um, oof, can I say this? Term? I don't think I want to use this term, but they essentially made it. A, a an escape right like you you've seen this in numerous situations uh where people escape through certain tunnels and get away right. from certain situations and so the, if they they highlighted that in the kenobi series so if it's there in the kenobi series then i think it's something that you can play with down the road for sure and not just in a book because most of the times that's how they right. get away with it. like oh we'll put it in the book and that's how we kind of covered it like, no, no, my no, prediction will be the teaser on. poster will be carved uh wood slash uh carvings and it'll oh, say with the, the names path, and all that yeah. and yeah. it'll have like yeah. a, in carvings disney plus and it will have the jedi uh symbol sure. uh in carving that is mark that that is not a prediction that's a spoiler <laughs> okay spoiler. all right um all right well there you go that's our episode unless kevin has one more thing to add uh, oh, okay i think we're good yeah, right. up today man <laughs> i love it i appreciate that <laughs> thank you all so much for joining us for this episode of the jedi way we always appreciate you all taking the time to watch or listen to the show you can always listen to the show on the outlaw nation podcast network we appreciate that madly you can always hit a like on this video right now and uh leave comments down below hope you've been leaving comments throughout the show as well and subscribe to the channel that's really important hit that subscribe button hit that bell button so you see when we're dropping all the content we do here on the outlaw nation channel want to give a special shout out to frankie janish who I haven't seen in quite some time yeah i know frank you've been working hard on scoundrels inc but also working hard on that schmodown channel that's out there on yeah. 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 channel but let people sure. know where they can find you and all the stuff you got going on brother man thanks for taking yeah. the time again Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for having me and inviting me over here. It's been a lot of fun uh, chopping up with both of you guys over here. And uh, you can find me over on the aforementioned Scoundrels Inc. Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, all the social media sites. You, know, you can find me Frankie J29, uh, Twitter, Instagram as well. And uh, yeah, hop over by Scoundrels Inc. where I can yell at Kevin for talking about things that are filler that are not filler. So there's that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and Kevin, always great to see you, brother, man. Thanks so much again. Uh, been loving you being a central part of the Jedi way uh, here as we've do been doing it for the last few months with you. Please let people know what you got going on and where, and where they can find you. I could definitely say this was not a filler episode. Thanks for being on here, uh, Frank. Uh, we, uh, yeah, uh, Scoundrels Inc., obviously. I get to get yelled at by Frank. That's always fun. Um, also, KOTOR, we had some fun. I edited, uh, we have a the kid crossover movie coming up where a tale of mm -hmm. two Revens and a multiverse movie. Uh, and I took a trailer that we had already released and I re edited it with Back to the Future music. So we just released that on oh, our channel nice. today. And it's crazy how well it's doing, which is just funny. Like it should have no business doing well because it's a re-release of the exact same trailer, but just using Back to the Future music. It takes on a completely different feel and vibe. It's really funny. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. the link broke up. You hadn't seen nice. it. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, so that's doing well. That's at Smash City Studios. Or if you just search KOTOR Movie Trilogy, you'll find us one of the top uh, links there, which is kind of cool. We're, we're really kind of climbing up there as far as search results go. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's always good to be here. It's a distraction. I'm a little, uh, it's been a tough week. Uh, so maybe the, some of that peaked out a little bit with my uh, my takes, but I stand by them and I look forward to being on here in a couple weeks. And in the comments, I like to respond to you guys sometimes. So uh, as long as you keep it simple. <laughs> sometimes. Uh, some, yeah. You know, if, if you're a jerk, I'm probably going to ignore you. But, uh, you know, I love uh, discourse with the fans. So say hi in the comments and uh, I'll hit it back. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. As as for me, you can follow me at the Roca says on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, the Outlaw Nation on Twitch. All the stuff that's going on on the Outlaw Nation channel. All this week, we dropped some Geek Buddy stuff. We dropped the hot mic. All that stuff is out there. My trailer reactions for Alien Romulus, for the Rebel Moon trailer. All kinds of stuff happening here. Just and that's just one week. And there's more to come here this weekend as we drop more stuff because we've got uh, Roadhouse coming out this weekend. We've got Three Body Problem coming out this weekend. So I'll be having reviews of that popping up this weekend as well. Y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for joining us uh kevin do you have a star wars quote that you want to say because it's usually laura who says it uh, oh, uh yeah yeah yeah. how about a, we'll do another famous qui-gon quote sure. uh he's by the way my favorite jedi ever so but there's a funny youtube video that floats around where they say he's the worst jedi ever and one of them is when obi-wan says i have a bad feeling about this and i'll just end the show with i don't sense anything <laughs> <laughs>